This is a podcast by Wellhouse Church, where we talk about what it's like to be a Christian Monday through Saturday, to live as a person of faith in a culture against faith. Okay, so I, today I want to finish up our conversation from last week um, about substance use disorders. Um, but first, how was your day? Uh, good. Good. I did. There were a few moments of stress, mm-hmm. uh, but overall, today was a good day. Good. I I didn't feel like the day was overall stressful. Uh, felt like I got a lot accomplished today. Also, felt like I feel good at the end of a. You know, we're recording this on a Wednesday. Like, yeah. I feel good on a Thursday. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Thursday. Yeah, it's Thursday. So, yeah, to be this far into the week and feel this way, I feel like I it's, it was a good day. That's good. How was yours? Um, today was amazing. Um, this past week has not been. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've had a lot going on at work. Um, and for the last three days... Um, I think in total, I had probably about 10 hour days mm, every day. Wow. Um, just all of the things going on. Yeah. Um, like last night, I didn't, I left my day job, came home, had a little bit, then had to leave again for some school stuff. Mm. Um, like immediately after or almost immediately after I had like maybe an hour yeah. to like chill um and i didn't end up getting home until like 8 or 8 30 and so that has been my week and so today i was like you need some self-care yeah um because i had time for it and so i took it good for Um, you and so today was good (laughs) because i got some rest um but yeah it it was a it's been a tough week in general um so let's move into this. Let's do it. We didn't end up finishing talking about all that I want to talk about last week. Okay. Because this is such a deep kind of conversation. There's so much going on with substance use and substance abuse and substance use disorders, right? Um, that you had a lot of questions that I want you to keep asking. Yeah. Right. I want to keep walking these things out because if you have these questions, our listeners probably have these questions, right? Um, And so I want to keep walking these things out. um, But I want us to talk a little bit about co-occurring mental health challenges and substance use disorder. Okay. Because rarely do substance use disorders come out of a place of a healthy person. If um, ever. Yeah. Um, Fair point. Lots of times where we see substance use disorders is people trying to, quote, self-medicate. Yeah. And for, like, a little bit of an explanation there for the people that English might be their second language, that is not what it sounds like. Yeah. Um, it is a very unhealthy way of coping. Hey, buddy, what are you doing? Um Yes. Hi. It is a very unhealthy way of coping um, in which you have things going on in your life, depression, anxiety, stemming from trauma. Maybe it's clinical. Maybe it's not um, in which you think you need substances to get through. Right. Um, Which... Maybe you're trying to survive. Yeah, it happens out of survival. Um, and so, like, that that does happen. But um, that's not the best way to, to handle it, to deal with it, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, some some stats here. Hold on. Dude, you need to lay down or something. <laughs> um, so, in a study from 2014, so this is an older study. Um, but 18.3% 
of individuals over the age of 18. Okay. In 2014, um, with mental illnesses, mm-hmm. 3.4% of those had a substance use disorder. Okay. Um, so, very prevalent. I feel like that number should be higher. I don't know but why. What we, I don't, what I don't we, have data for it. What did we talk about last week, though? Lots of times, substance use disorders go, go undiagnosed. undiagnosed. Yeah. Um, so, that number is guaranteeably higher. Yeah. But, like, I think it should be, like, astronomically higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Agreed. Okay, same team, yeah. Same team. 100% <laughs> agreed. Because substance use disorders um, really fly under the radar. Yeah. Because so many people struggle with, like, opioid addictions. Yeah. Because they were prescribed. Um, yeah. Yeah. They don't get documented. Yeah. They don't get put into studies like this. Um, mm. Lots of times, right? Like that. Yeah. It, and that's the thing that is so scary about substance use disorders. Because it could look like, you know, it's a Saturday night. You're having fun. You over drink a little bit. Yeah. But that's all you see of that person. Yeah. Um, you don't know. Yeah. You don't know what happens on the Tuesday night. <laughs> yeah. Um, and lots of people don't want to be vulnerable about that because there's stigma with it. Yeah, there absolutely is stigma with it for sure. You know, that's where we get terms like, oh, well, they're a drug addict or, oh, a drunk or they're a drunk or, or whatever. Right. Yeah. It's so stigmatizing and it's scary, honestly, how stigmatizing we make this because instead of offering a place in the church of which the church has tried to do like hosting AA meetings and NA meetings and stuff like that and SLA meetings, um, overall the church has been a place of judgment, um, yeah, with, with with these things. Um, we have not been a place of healing and of restoration when it comes to substance use disorders. Well, so this, this level of stigma is not, should not be surprising. Well, I think it goes even deeper. Um, because yeah, the church as an institution has had that view, but I can't tell you how many Christians I've heard tell me that they don't want to give a, like, they don't want to give cash to a homeless person because they're afraid they're going to spend it on drugs. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like that's the biggest stigma of all time. You've just you've furthered their poverty mm. because of your fear of them being a drug addict when nothing about their person yeah. gives you any right to assume that they're a drug addict. When actually statistically most of the time they're not looking for money for substances. No, they really want to get out of being homeless. They want to get out of home, uh, out of being homeless. They just want food or yeah. water, right? They want safety and security. What is Maslow's hierarchy? What is the basic thing? What is the bottom tier of Maslow? Do you know? Safety or security? No. The shelter. It's physical needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, like... When you're in a state where you aren't having that need met, yeah. scientifically speaking, you cannot need anything else until this need is met. Yeah. Um, until your basic needs of food, shelter, water, like yeah. clothing are met, you can't yeah. need anything else. Yeah. And so it's the level of stigma connected to like you were talking about with homeless people and substance use is ridiculous to me. Yeah. Just absolutely asinine. Yeah. But then further, just the stigma around even pastors that have come out as with substance use disorders and then being shunned from their church yeah. because they had substance use issues. Yeah. Um, yeah. What what are your thoughts on that specifically? I'm actually curious. 
So I actually, so I try really hard. Um, I tell people all the time, if you ever met me in person in a pastoral capacity, um, I will tell you, don't put me on the pedestal Mm -hmm. because I will fall. I think for too long, we've thought of pastors as the Christian superiority. Um, and we're just people like we're just people. Um, yeah, we do our living of trying to guide and offer places of healing. Um, but we deal with our own traumas and we're just people. Yeah. Um, so don't put me on a pedestal cause I'm not going myself down, uh, eventually. And in the same way, I think that pastors can fail in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, some of them more understandable than others. The massive sexual exploitation of pastors, like of pastors sexually exploiting congregants, I have a much harder time allowing grace for. Um, but substance abuses, look, I get it. I, yeah. I get the struggle of trying to deal with the pain of your life. Um, we were actually a part of a church that one of the staff... Mm. Um, went to the leadership and said, hey, I, I think I'm an alcoholic. Uh, and so the church continued to pay his salary and sent him to rehab, to a treatment facility. Um, and he was gone for like five months. Supported him all the way through, continued to give him a paycheck. And when he came back? He was welcome. very healthy human being. Yeah. And he was welcomed and loved no judgment, uh, no stigmas. And that's how it should be. I think so. But at the same point, we don't have that for our congregants. Right. We don't do that. There's a book that I read um, a couple years ago. Uh, not a couple years ago. It was, I guess, yeah, I guess a couple years ago. Um, I was looking for it. It's called The, Re- the Recovery-Minded Church. Um. Yeah, sorry, here it is. Whoops. It's called the Recovery Minded or uh Recovery Minded Church, Loving and Ministering to People with Addictions by Jonathan Benz. And it became very clear to me in reading this book. We don't care for addiction, like people who are addicted. Um there's a ton of stigma around it. There's a ton of shame and ostracization uh that comes with like the church and people that are addicted. Uh, There are churches who have tried to bridge the gap by offering, you know, like you talked about AA or celebrate recovery or those kinds of things. And if I can be honest, that's admirable. Yeah. If I can be real honest, they're not helping the problem. It's not enough. It's not enough because what I want to know is if, is if, if somebody walked into that church on a Sunday morning drunk what would they How do? would they be received? Yeah. What what steps would be taken in that moment? Yep. So, no. I don't I don't think we do a good job of ministering to people with addictions. Um I think that it's a problem that we don't do a better job. I actually think it's a very severe problem. Yeah. Um, because if we are correct, which we at Wellhaus believe we are, that any sort of mental illness is that an illness, it is a sickness. Yeah. I must rely on the things I'm confident of. Mm. And the thing I'm confident of is that in Luke's gospel, Jesus uses the metaphor of this being a place of healing, that it's not the healthy in need of a physician. It's the sick. It's the sick. I don't think we do a good job. Let me say this. In the nicest way possible, with the most grace possible, 
historically, I do not think the church has done a good job at any capacity, at least in America, of being a place of healing. Yeah. Agreed. So, um, kind of following up on some information that we talked about last week, um, that substance use disorders typically start younger. Yeah. Um, which is another really scary, sad thing. Well, there's two, I think there's two things that trouble me. And I was in youth ministry for a long time. Yeah. There are two things that trouble me about young people. And it's that in order to deal with their own pain and trauma, that sometimes they don't even, they really, better than adults, pretend doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. There are two places they always go to deal with their pain. Substances and self-harm. Yeah. And it's because they're the two things that are accessible to them. Mm. I think they would cope in other ways if they had accessibility to other ways. Unfortunately, the the two that they choose for themselves are often the most harmful in terms of lasting effects. Yeah. So, and coupled with that, I'm glad that you went there because coupled with that, people who develop substance use disorders before they're 26 are more at risk for a mood disorder. Really? Mm-hmm. How much more likely do you know? I don't don't have that stat. Even I just still, know that life's, in general. Life's hard enough. I don't need any help struggling with a mood disorder, right? I mean, man... Well, and, and that's that um, intersectionality that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah. Is that, it, is, so you're 15 years old, you know, you have, this is a, a, just an example, right, um, that sadly very common. You're 15 years old, your dad's abusive, um, you go to substances to try to deal with it, you develop a substance use disorder. You are pushing down all of that pain and trauma, not dealing with it, just trying to survive with the substances. Yeah. You become a fully functioning adult and still have all of that pain and trauma from when from 10, 11, 12 yeah. years ago that is going to come back as a mood disorder. Yeah. Those things don't just go away. Yeah. It it very much so is a compounding foundation. Yeah. Substance use disorders don't come out of nowhere. Yeah. But the bad thing is, is they act as a bridge for other things. Um, I see that. And not only do they act as a bridge for other disorders, um, they create opportunity for other bad things to happen. Yeah. So, for instance, death from motor vehicles. Um, Yeah. So, 28% of all the deaths in motor vehicles in 2016 in the U.S., um, 10,497 people died from people driving while intoxicated. So that, yeah. It seems like a small number. That's just intoxication, though. That's, just, that's not talking that's about... That's not under the influence. No, that's, that's a DWI versus a DUI. Yeah, wow. Um, and alcohol is, I think, probably one of the smaller... Probably. Of the two. Physical injuries. Um, Driving while intoxicated or high. Um, That can happen. But also think about how many times you've seen people drunk or high or whatever start fights and then get the crap kicked out of them. Yep. Um, or 
beat the mess out of somebody or beat the mess out of somebody crazy else. crazy enough when they're drinking. Um, yeah. Physical injuries causing people physical injuries, which with both of the previous categories, with this one and the last one, come with criminal charges. Yeah, I think this is this is my main problem with substance abuse. If I, because if we're honest, outside of alcohol, the Bible's really doesn't talk about it. We don't really have references of drugs of any kind in the Bible. Yeah. My problem with substance abuse is both for yourself and those around you. It's harmful to the image. Yeah. It's harmful to your own image of God. You harm other people who are the image of God. It, it's something that is categorically harmful to humanity, which is the image of God. Like that, That's my main problem yeah. with it. Which in building off of that, you know, with substance use disorders come sexual risk taking, taking mm. um, which is where we get STDs, um, unplanned pregnancies, um, which lead to a number of different issues. Yep. In both of those categories. Yep. Um, you get raped. You get raped. Sexual exploitation. Um, being a victim of a crime is a subcategory of that as well. Yeah. Um, hmm. You lose all inhibitions. You lose your ability to stop something from happening or stop yourself from doing something. Because if I worded the way that I had previously just worded it, it sounds like victim blaming on the, on the right. female. But I don't want to do that. Yeah. Because also... Lots of times at these parties where girls are getting raped, you know, in uh, college parties, it's the guy who is intoxicated yeah. who's making this happen. Yeah. Well, I think over prolonged experiences, at least in the way I view it, substance abuses and specifically alcohol, too deep in it, and it makes you lose your humanity. Mm. That image of God that is so pertinent to the story, that image of God that's who you are at your core, that you are good, prolonged exposure of substances take that away. Mm. Um, it just, it, it, you lose your humanity in the substance. Yeah, um, and based on that, it can also lead to suicide and NSSI. Um, we actually know someone who was intoxicated and tried to commit suicide. Hmm. Um, yep. Someone that we're very close to. Yep. Um, and that person even admitted to me that it wouldn't have been even an issue in that moment yeah. if they hadn't been intoxicated. Yeah. Fundamentally, yeah. your image of God is there, whether you believe it or not. Your pain, your trauma doesn't negate your image of God. It may keep you from remembering that it's there, but it is there. This is what I'm trying to tell you. This is what we're trying to tell you. You are still made in the image of God, beautiful and whole. The world in of itself and the pain and the trauma in the world has stripped that away from you. Don't go to substances to fill that hole. Because there is a God that 
loves you. Story.